How long was that? No, I just started. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're good. I thought all my secrets were out. No. <laughs> oh. But what is out of the gate is this week's edition of the real podcast here on the PFC Entertainment Network. Along with Amy Sheridan, I'm Jason Klaus. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, <laughs> it's Amy week here. And, uh, like, love that for me. <laughs> I look forward to this shit. Especially when you consider, you know, in all reality, kind of pulling the curtain back just a teeny tiny bit. We've been on this call for about 50 minutes now, and that could have been its own very entertaining episode. But be that as it may, it is good to see you, dear. How are it's things in you. your neck of the woods? Um, Actually, fabulous. So there's so many things that have happened like these past couple of weeks, but I am going to start with just yesterday. I'm going to start with just yesterday because between yesterday and today's activities, it's like, it's been fucking crazy. Um, okay. So God, I, I almost wish that this was recorded on YouTube because I know that I'm going to get super animated in this episode, because I got a fucking killer topic. Killer topic. Listen, if it's the easiest thing in the world to take this to put it on YouTube. So if you decide you okay. want this to be on YouTube, easiest thing in the world. Yeah, we'll see. Because I just okay. want to make sure and I don't I don't slip up. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a good one. It's going to okay. be good. Well, I'm here for it. So let's, let's roll. So yesterday... Yesterday was my oldest son's 21st birthday, mm -hmm. and he is so amazing, and I'll wish him a happy birthday now, even though that this doesn't, you know, drop until Saturday, it's fine. Um, we took him to go see Ugly Kid Joe at the machine shop last night. Let me tell you what, for being a 90s band, like, Ugly Kid Joe puts on one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Like they were really good and they sound so crisp and the dude, you know, like back in the nineties, you know, you'd think, Oh my gosh. Well, you know, uh, that dude must be on drugs. Like he looked like he was so cracked out when he was like singing all this shit, you know, but either he got off drugs or he never really was on drugs because he like didn't miss a beat. They were awesome. Like, if you want to check out a really good 90s band that really still has it and sounds almost exactly the same, um, maybe just tweaked up a little bit, go see Ugly Kid Joe. Because it was an amazing show. Amazing, amazing show. Um, Matt really enjoyed himself. You know, he, you know, he's like a, a huge lover of music. Um, he's never even heard of Ugly Kid Joe. But... Uh, it didn't stop him from having a good time and liking their songs, you know. So that was awesome. I'm I was I was super happy with how that turned out. Um, my dad had ended up getting him. It was my dad's idea to take him to the machine shop to go to this show because the show was on his actual birthday and it was like a '90s band and it was like in the genre that Matt really likes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was. It, it was just, it was a great time all around. Uh, so, so that, so we get home and actually I had taken off today and tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday and Monday. So I have the whole five days because I told my boss that I was incredibly burned out and I was <laughs> like, I'm not going to die, but I was just so burned out from like the work and I was so stressed out and everything. And she's like, you need to go book yourself a massage. So I did. And actually, I bumped it up because I booked myself a massage today. It was only a half hour. Um, but with everything I had to do this morning, a half hour was was plenty. And it was just, like, just enough to melt a lot of stress away. And I also booked a hair appointment for tomorrow, which I almost never do because I never have time to do. Um, so I'm really you know, doing the self-care thing, like, while I'm actually off for this little bit, I'll still be checking, like, my emails to make sure that there's no, you know, fires or anything that I need to put out, 
Um, but all in all, it was, you know, it was, it was just, it's just awesome. I'm just so excited to have the next five days off. Um, this morning, my dog fucking pew, beeline for the door and ran across the entire fucking neighborhood. And I tried to chase him, her, try to chase her. And she is like a little fox. So I was really pissed off about that. And then um, once I finally caught her like 15 minutes later and about to vomit because I actually had to run, which is really hard for me to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had to like run and I was so pissed and so tired because like I woke up with a headache, even though I didn't really like drink that much. Um, I didn't. I, I only had like two drinks the entire day yesterday, like even going to the, you know, the machine shop and stuff. Like I had one at Applebee's beforehand and then one at the actual venue. But I, I think it was like the, the smoke, you know, that was in the building and the loud music. Yeah. Because like this morning, like my ears were ringing and, you know, I had a headache. So first thing, you know, as soon as I get up, I, I let the dogs out and Charlie takes off on me, does that whole fucking charade. And I catch her. I spank her, <laughs> I put her back in her cage. Um, it's not even a cage, it's just a gate, you know, by right. the door. Um, I'm just, you know, I had to reiterate that for like the dog people that listen to this. Like I don't, you know, I don't like- Dog anything. abuser. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Like she has plenty of room to run. Um, so I did that and then I went to go make myself some coffee because my head was just like pounding and my ears were ringing and my coffee pod like blew up in my coffee maker and I was just like, what the crap? And it was like my last coffee pod. So I was like, oh. so I was like really disheartened and I'm like, oh my God, I can't even take this crap. So like I go to Starbucks and I get myself a coffee and I was like, okay. This is just getting a little bit better. And like while I was out, and this is like 930 in the morning. Um, and then while I was out, like I just drove to Lake Orion on a whim to go to like the little cake decorating shop that they have there. And I got like a million new cookie cutters and all these things. And it was like, oh, heaven. And then that's when I made like my massage appointment and my hair appointment for tomorrow. And like everything was falling into place. And then as soon as I like got done with that, I went to my dad's house, did what I needed to do there. And then like I drove to the massage place and I got my massage. And then I drove to Chase's school, picked up Chase, took him to Starbucks because he wanted a Frappuccino. And then came home and now I'm talking to you and everything's great. <laughs> I was wondering where this story was going because I'm over here, I'm like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. Like, what is the big boom that's coming here? So nothing. I'm glad to know that. Yeah, nothing. There, there is no big boom. We're good thought, here. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a really shitty day because it was starting out like terrible. Sure. But it was turning into something so great and like me getting all these things done and like throwing in a little self care here and. You know, now I get to talk to you and I found out some awesome stuff. And so that, like, I'm super happy about that. And so, like, my whole day is just going good. And I got, like, I'm making salmon for dinner. So I have, like, oh, salmon yeah? On the counter. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's on the counter. I got, like, my lemons. <laughs> I'm doing it up. I'm doing it up today. Today is a good day. The good start of my little mini vacation. I... Listen, you don't hear that very often. Usually yeah. uh, there's some sort of, you know, doom and gloom and drama and chaos and controversy and some layer of bullshit going on. So, like, I'm over here and I'm listening to you lay this out. I'm like, okay, here it comes. Oh, no, we're still happy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Here, here it is. No. Like, the whole. I'll be honest. The whole coffee pot thing exploding... And that being that, that would have been enough for me. I think we are not doing this today. Um, I am going to retreat and we'll try this to shit tomorrow. So. Well, and it was funny. It's funny that you say that because when that happened and I was on my way to Starbucks, I called my mom and I was just like, if this is any indication of the day that is going to happen for me today, like I'm done. Right. And she's like, 
talk to me about it. Tell me. Tell me about it. And I was just like, this happened. And fucking Charlie. And <laughs> my coffee. And she, I was like, now I'm going to Starbucks. And then it was like, once, once I did that and I got my coffee. And then, like, I made the trip to go down and, you know, do a little cookie shopping for myself, which makes me really happy. Sure. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just a, a good day. Everything is just, like, great. It's just great. I just have no complaints. I like, and I got my wine. I mean, everything else is cream cheese at, at this point. It is. It is. Very Love that for you. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad things are going good. I'm glad you're happy. You deserve to be happy. You're good people. I want good people to be happy. Um, I guess I'll use this as a quick transition sidebar. Um, let's talk about happiness. We have a pretty big thing coming up here that now includes your involvement, Amy. Um, we've talked about it on Power Tripping Through the 80s. Uh, we, this network has been asked to be a part of pride in the park on saturday june the 10th at lakeside park in holly and we have expanded it it's no longer a power tripping through the 80s event this is now a pfc entertainment all-stars event because amy i i'm beyond excited to be able to let everybody know that you will be joining sean and me on that particular day for live podcasting and we cannot be more thrilled to have you on board with us oh i know i am i'm super happy just to even be asked um it's <laughs> first of all i mean we don't have to say how important um you know showing up to events like that is and supporting you know that i i don't even want to say cause because it's not really even a cause it's a celebration right. it, it, you know and it's a celebration of um people just normal regular people loving other normal regular people and that is amazing so hell yeah i'm so on board and i can't wait and like i want to go shopping for some awesome rainbow stuff because all of my rainbow gear actually <laughs> is like one's like got like a little ghost on it and it's like the like the end of the little ghost on it is like a rainbow and it, it's cute but it's like more halloweeny yeah and this is more you know like springy summery so you know i i just really like i want to go shopping to represent and you know just be supportive and i'm i'm just I'm super super excited super excited you can check out all the information as it becomes available over on Facebook. Uh, we will be posting updates on the PFC Entertainment Network page as well as PulseOfTheHeart.net. Uh, very, very excited about that. We've got other things that are uh, in the works as far as live presentations go. Uh, so just keep, keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, in the coming weeks because i guarantee you some some of it is going to blow people's fucking minds but uh, yeah i'm here for it me too <laughs> I, I, me too <laughs> oh so are you ready for this topic look yeah full disclosure i have no idea what we're talking about we've been on this call for over an hour we talked about a lot of shit the topic the actual topic of this week's show has not been one of them. So lay it on me, sister. What are we talking about? I, I see. I love not telling you things because I want to see like your general reactions to it. And this one, I don't know why I haven't done this one before because it's, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. And actually I have this thing with my husband, like this agreement that if something happens, then he needs to make sure that something else doesn't happen. And I'll tell you what it is. Okay. When I die, I do not want any weird people that are not really my friends at my funeral. I don't want them commenting on my shit. I don't want them expressing their condolences at my my funeral i don't want them being oh she was like my best friend and like i really wasn't 
have you ever came across those people where when somebody passes away, they get on their Facebook and they're like, oh my God, I'm so heartbroken right now. So-and-so passed away and oh my God, like I felt just so close to, to them. And, and you know damn well that they really weren't friends anyways. And said person would talk shit about dead person. Do you know how fucking irritating it is? It's so irritating. Like, you, mm, okay, so I'm going to throw this in, in your little bonnet. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you say in my bonnet? Yeah, even though you don't wear a bonnet, it's okay. I say I have oh. balls, but I don't really have balls, so it's fine. <laughs> um. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, you've got bigger balls than, like, 60% of the dudes I know, but be that as it may, <laughs> please continue. Um. So, like, I know the kind of people, like, I went to school with. And, you know, I, I can only imagine that you had to have been dealing with something like that when it came to, like, Jeff's funeral or people reaching out to you. Because, like, I know how they are. And although I didn't, like... No, Jeff, no, Jeff. I wasn't best friends with Jeff. You know, you know my history with Jeff. It was a very tumultuous one, even though later in life it was fine. It was great. You know, he he was awesome. But it wasn't like we were like this. Right. And I never pretended that we were like this either. But I've seen quite a bit of people doing that. Yeah. Quite a bit. And like... To me, it's just so irritating. And I, I would tell, like, I don't know. It's it's almost like every funeral. I feel like I'm reminding Tim, remember, if someone comes to my funeral and acts like that, and you know damn well that we weren't friends, kick them out, please. Like, kick them out. And he's like, yeah, no, I got you. That's fine. And I was like, because there is nothing more that I hate than a wolf at someone's funeral. Trying to gain attention and, you know, like squeegee it out and and then make posts about it on fucking Facebook. And it's irritating. It's so bad. It's so bad. I feel this wholeheartedly. Because in the wake of everything that happened with my brother, like... Evidently, based on people's posts and comments and things of that nature, like my brother had, I don't know, like 79 lifelong best friends. Yep. The problem is I knew of maybe two of them. <laughs> and it's like, who in the fuck are you? Where did you come from? And what is your end game here? Now... I wondered at that time, am I being too emotional about things? Because I was still very much processing my own feelings. But I see shit like, like I was reading this stuff. I was hearing these things. And it's like, I have no fucking idea who you are. I like you. I didn't even know you existed until just the right the second. Um, it has always been a, a source of contention for me, even before, like, Jeff and I had these kind of conversations. People will try to latch themselves onto a disaster or a layer of controversy to make themselves relevant or to make themselves feel relevant because... There's a lot of attention being paid to this particular entity, whatever it is. And I'm over here kind of in the shadows and I need some of that attention. So I'm going to latch myself onto that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, even if these people did, excuse me, even if they did know him for X amount of time, um, he generally didn't hang out with people that 
had ulterior motives as to that's why they were part of his life. You know, it was, yeah, it was to better their lives on a more fundamental level, not as a public persona or presentation. Right, right. I, um, now, I, I understand that there's a very fine line between a person touching your life somehow, you know, like doing, doing, something uh kind of like how jeff was with me like we we were acquaintances you know friendly acquaintances um and like every like i said every saved by the bell episode like i always think of him because he always used to watch saved by the bell and then he always used to think he was zach morris and like he was the only one that did that shit you know so it, it was kind of like yeah, I, I think about him when I watch Saved by the Bell, but I did that before, and, like, he knows I did it before. But with him, there was a certain story that I had relayed to you of how he influenced my life, like, how he touched my life and how we were able to get past, you know, that shit, like, the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. Um it's things like, like, it's, it's okay to express your condolences to somebody when they've touched your life, or if you knew that they were a good person, and, you know, you were friendly acquaintances. Condolences, you know, like, that's good. But going on Facebook and being like, oh, my God, my life is ruined. I'm in tears right now. I haven't been able to stop crying. You know, so-and-so passed away, and we were so close right up to the end or, you know, whatever. Like, and they know that they weren't. There's, there's, there's a fine line between, like, condolences and somebody, you know, touching your life in some way or another. And, and it's okay to express that. But in the way that these people are doing it, like, it's so, it, it's so annoying. And then you'll see people in comments be like, I don't, I don't remember you. You know, like... <laughs> I, when, when was that? Like, when was this? You know, and some people will call you out on your shit and then you'll make up something, which is even worse. You know, like, it, it just adds to the shit, you know, and. Not only that, you're, they're causing themselves another layer of, of distress because they have to keep in mind, they have to remember what bullshit they're feeding Right. This person that may be different than what they said to this person. Now they're trying to keep all these quote unquote backstories right. squared away, and eventually you fuck up. You, yeah, you know, and then then yeah. you're calling into question everything in, as far as your your presentation in life. Yeah, and well, and then some people that express their condolences. But then they they go to the funeral in which if, you know, if you'd like to express your condolences at a funeral instead of online, that's fine, too. But don't sit there and bawl your eyes out and cry and make this big scene. And everyone's like, oh, my God. Well, how were they? You know, like, first of all, who are they? <laughs> And second of all, like, why are they crying so hard? And so then, you know, ultimately people want to calm down that person. You know, it's like a way to gain attention. And again, the family is like, I, I, I don't know you kind of a thing. You know, like, I, I'm sorry, uh, so-and-so had so many friends, but I don't seem to remember you. You know, and they just make it into this big thing. And, <clears throat> you know, like... Going to a funeral, I, you know, I went to a couple that, um, I was not, I was not hugely associated, like we weren't, you know, best friends, but I, I knew you and I wanted to pay my respects. That's usually why you go to a funeral. You know, you, you want to pay your respects to the family, you know, whatever have you, but don't make a big spectacle out of it. Like, oh my gosh. And there's a difference also between, like, human beings, if you're, here's the one that's going to get you, human beings and other human beings that are famous. 
Do you know how many times I have seen someone post, oh my God, rip so-and-so, they were my hero. Mm -hmm. When, and, and then they'll name some, some special thing after it. Like they were my hero. I blank, 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 blank. Like watch them when I was fucking 10. And that's why I started doing this. And then, like, a week later, another celebrity will pass, and they'll be like, oh, my God. This one hits hard. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Rip. <laughs> this, this, this one hits hard. They were my hero because of this. And you're just like, are you going to do this with every celebrity? If they're okay to play devil's advocate, I feel like that's going to happen three times in my life that ju that you just laid out here that somebody of celebrity status is going to pass away and it is going to be a it's going to be a blow because they were such a huge part of they were a big influence into who I am here today Hulk Hogan Steve Austin and The Undertaker. When those three go, those are going to be bad days. However, here, I'm like, hold on. Here's yep. the thing, though. Okay. These posts start with, oh my God, rip. <laughs> <laughs> almost every, almost every time. <laughs> he was my hero, or they were my hero, not they were one of my heroes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, growing up, they were one of my heroes. You know, like, it's it's the same stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> they were my hero. And you're just like, wait a second. Because last week, I swear to God, you had a different hero. <laughs> and that's fine. But if you're going to word it like that, like, you need to word it, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they were one of my heroes. Because I have many. Or I really looked up to this person. You know what I mean? But it's it's almost the same shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rip. Rip. <laughs> Serious. I'm dead serious. Shit, I've seen I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple. Like within the past couple weeks. I'm I'm gonna say three weeks. And hopefully the per I mean the person's gonna if they listen to this, they're gonna know it's them. <laughs> but it's okay. Cause maybe the next time a celebrity will die, they will word it different. <laughs> And you know, that was on <laughs> that was on display yesterday as we're recording it because we're we're recording this on Thursday. Are you talking about Tina Turner? Tina Turner. Yeah. Uh, icon. She was an icon, absolutely. But some of the much like what you're saying, some of the people that are posting these heartfelt <laughs> Oh my god. Rip. <laughs> Uh, I never, you never ever mentioned this woman's name, let right. alone listen to her music with that when I was around and I've been around you for a minute. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to, like you're saying, you want to pay your condolences and show respect because whether you were a fan of hers or not, you cannot deny, oh. you know, if you really know her story, you can see why she garners the attention and the respect that she does. Yes. You have to respect that. I'm not a huge Tina Turner fan, but goddamn, do I know that she is very iconic and she paved the way for, I mean, she didn't just pave the way, you know, she bought the land and cultivated it and, and then paved for other people to come through and, and, do those things like I know how I iconic she she is but 
it's okay to say that. It's okay to say the truth. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can love somebody and, and think that they're iconic, but when you're like, oh my God, <laughs> rip. <laughs> I used to, I used to listen to Tina Turner every fucking day. She was my hero. Mm-mm. And like, you know. Right. That- they don't own a Tina Turner anything. Not a fucking cassette. Not a CD. Not a fucking DVD. They don't even own the movie. What's love got to do with this? You know, like... Sidebar, great fucking movie. It is. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, like, I would never do that. Why don't you just say, oh, man, Hollywood lost a fucking good one today. You know, like, she was so iconic. Like, her story is amazing. You know, why not just be real with it? Why Why not just say factually, like, what you liked about her? Not like, oh, my God, she's my hero. No, she really wasn't, like, though, because you probably listen to Backstreet Boys more than you listen to fucking Nina Turner. Like, let's yeah, that was that was going to be my question. When's the last time you, you, you listened to a Tina Turner song? I'm sure a lot of people when I did yesterday. What love got to do with it. Yeah. You know, yesterday she became the most downloaded female artist of the day. But it takes shit like that for for that to happen. Like, damn, we lost her. Um, So let's celebrate her, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but now we're going to, like, listen to all of her songs because we did that before. Not really. I'm just going to pretend that I did and that I'm so upset. Why? Why? It's so irritating. It's so irritating. It is. I've come across a lot of these. Let me ask you this. Um, A a little bit ago, you were laying out these different scenarios, especially, you know, people that you didn't necessarily care for in real life. You know, you don't want them at at your funeral or whatever. Oh, God. I was trying to find a way to to word this without it coming off so assholeish, but no, no, go ahead. Um, if I had a train of thought, and then Tina Turner came up and it fucked me up because oh my god, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, now for people that you don't that you don't, I guess this is where I'm going to go with it. People that you didn't particularly care for. Yes. In real life, they pass away. They pass away? They pass away. Okay. But you feel... You go to pay your respects. Now, there's a difference between... And I know you kind of of touched on this, but this this is a common scenario. Like, somebody and you don't get along, they pass away... Do you, I don't want to say you're obligated or, or you feel like you have to, but you go to pay your, your respects. Do, in your mind, when you see things like that unfold, is there a level of hypocrisy that, that comes with it? Like they, These people spent a good chunk of their living time together at odds or arguing or whatever, and now this person who was at odds with the deceased is now showing up at this stage, at this event. Is there a level, do you see where that could be be perceived as a level of hypocrisy or it's just what it is? Like no. you realize life is too short. This is what's happened. So now you're coming to come to pe- or come to terms with, this is what it is. So are you talking about like, okay, so I had a, a friend that I was friends with, like actually friends with and, and real buddy buddy with for years and then we're at odds and then they die and then I will go or I die and they will come. Is, is like that what you're talking about? Because I'm talking about the people that like were never really friends with me. At all. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what I, that's what I wanted the the clarification on is what you're talking about initially. What started th- this conversation? People that you don't want at your funeral, 
yeah. are people that you didn't have a cordial re- relationship one way or the, or another with at any point in your life. Is that what we're talking about here? Yes, I am talking about like someone that knows my name from like high school and I die and my husband has never fucking heard of this person before in their life and they're at my funeral crying and being fucking weird and they're not a family friend. That's that's another thing. Because I think that if I was friends with the family, but not really friends with them, like, that's okay. You know, like, I, I, I would go to pay my respects to their family for their loss. But I wouldn't make a big spectacle about it. Or if it wasn't, like, I knew their family and knew of them, um, I would probably send flowers in my family's name, you know, with with condolences instead of actually physically showing up, depending on how well I knew them. Now, if we're talking like friends, I mean, so, OK, so me and my best friend of 30 plus years, like we're not speaking right now or, you know, we're, we're no longer friends uh, as of as of this moment. If something happened to her mom. I would be right there in a fucking heartbeat. Like, I would be right fucking there in a heartbeat. Um, I wouldn't care whether or not I was friends with her or speaking with her or anything. I would be there in a heartbeat because I've known that woman for almost my whole life. If something happened to her, I would be fucking crushed and devastated. And I know that the same is true for me. Like if my mom died or my dad died, I know that it would not matter what is going on between the two of us or how long it's been since we've spoken. I know that she would fucking be there. Um, I also know that if something happened to me, she would also be there no matter what, paying her respects, giving condolences, probably bawling her eyes out exactly the same as I would for her. Now, if I had a different best friend, like let's say, okay, so Tiffany, Tiffany is great, great example. I was best friends with Tiffany for four years, four or five years. Um, could have been a little bit longer. Um, and then we just, you know, we grew apart and separated and everything. But if something happened to like her kids, her mom, her dad, her, her husband, I would most definitely go pay my respects. Um, if something happened to her, I would definitely be upset, you know, but it's, just like one of those things like it doesn't matter if you're not really talking because like me and Tiffany we're not at odds with each other like I'm not mad at her she ain't mad at me you know whatever it's just one of the we just we just grew apart so I would most definitely go pay my respects and I would probably be sad about it they're good people you know but I wouldn't make a crazy display about it you know I I just wouldn't wouldn't do that it's kind of like I, I'm trying to think because there's there's like a couple instances and it's usually with younger people. OK, so this usually where I see it, like celebrities aside, because usually all celebrities, people, you know, you get the real crazies out. Um, but with younger people um, there, it, it has more of a tendency for other people to insert themselves into, like you had said, you know, try to attach themselves to the disaster. There was, I don't know if you've seen it um, on Facebook or the news or anything, there's a really terrible crash um, involving a UTV with a couple of North Branch students. One was 17, one was 18. The 18, both of them got ejected from the UTV. The 17 year old died right upon impact and the 18 year old has severe injuries and is like in a medically induced coma or um so uh what's the word when you're not not even like a medically induced coma when you're um just pumped full of drugs and shit so that you don't feel something but you're still kind of conscious what is that uh they said it 
It's not like a vegetable state, but... Oh. Correct. It's just for the pain. Like, right. Because she, like, it was reported she had a concussion, a broken vertebrae, and other major injuries. And she is, high, high, like, highly medicated um, to where they don't even know who was even driving this UTV. Because she, you know, she can't really talk because she's under heavy medication. She's just heavily medicated right now to deal with the pain of all of her injuries. So the 17 year old died and it's, it's on like every news station. It's all over Facebook. It's all over the, you know, Lapeer news and discussion pages, the North branch, just discussion pages. Um, it was, you know, other people are talking about it and these people that are coming out of the woodwork because it was a young girl, like, there's other girls from this girl's school that is like, oh, my God, she was so great. And, like, we were such good friends. And you know what I mean? Like, and that's where I start to see people questioning that. Like, well, I was her best friend, and I don't think that you were there. Kind of a deal. And, like, so pe people are really coming out of the woodwork for this 17-year-old. And, like, it's all over Facebook. And everyone's posting about it. And I'm just, like, I wonder how many of those are real and how many of those are fake. So, you know, when I'm thinking about these people, I'm thinking, like, people that Tim has never even heard of. You know, never, like, that we're not enemies, we're not friends. They just knew my name and they went to school with me, but they didn't have any classes with me. Maybe they made fun of me once, you know, who, who knows, who knows? They just know my name and, or, you know, like they knew my brother and they were kind of friends with my brother back in the day. And they'd be like, oh my God, that's Will's sister. You know what I mean? And so they're, oh my God, rip, you know, like she was so great and she was so full of life, even though they don't fucking know me right. <laughs> and nobody fucking knows them. In my whole family. So it's it's those people that I'm talking about. Because I, I believe that if, again, if someone has touched your life and they have a story to share, they should share it. Families enjoy hearing stories like that. You know, they, they, they enjoy hearing what great acts or, or, you know, like stories about their their loved ones that have touched the heart of someone else, and they they and you know they they like that stuff. They they like to to hear that stuff to know that they were living their life wonderfully and how awesome they were. And even if they hurt someone, you know, like how that changed that person's life or didn't change their life, they just noticed it and wanted to share it. You know, like there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're acting a fool and acting like you're that person's best friend and they're really not, you know, that, that's a whole big problem. And I think that there's so many of them out there that are just trying to gain that attention. And so they make this great big elaborate post, not like, oh, dude, they offered me one time a Pop-Tart in seventh hour because I was so hungry. It's not even like that, you know, like it's like they're just assholes and being like oh we were such good friends and you know making up some shit that's not even true and usually the family can spot it a mile away but the family is usually so busy dealing with their own grief that they're not gonna fucking take them out or whatever but i promised him that he he needs to if you don't fucking know these people and they're like oh yeah, she was so great. Like, you know my friends. <laughs> and you, you know my acquaintances. So. I feel like just for simplicity's sake, you should probably just make, like, a list. <laughs> and if they're not on the list, they ain't getting in. Well, but then what if I accidentally forget, you know? Well, that's on that's them. They didn't make that big of an impact. Fuck them. <laughs> Here's a scenario, though. All, all seriousness. Okay. Along these lines. What is the proper protocol when an ex-spouse 
or ex-in-law or somebody that's affiliated with your ex's family pass away? I'm not too sure because if if my hus if if my ex husband died, I would most definitely go pay my respects to his family or his new family or whatever. Um, most definitely, no matter how I felt about them, I you know I feel like that would be the proper thing to do. Or, um, because I did that with Matthew, like Matt's grandpa on his dad's side had passed away and he wanted to go. So I went with him to help him because, you know, he was younger. Right. Um, I went with him and everyone was super nice to me. They were like, Oh my gosh, like our family reunion is this day. You guys should come, you know, like you should bring that. They were still really nice to me, even though they knew that we were not together and I had, clearly moved on and he had clear clearly moved on and he wasn't he wasn't even there so I helped Matt you know pay his respects to his grandfather on his dad's side and I didn't get chastised for it but I also wasn't like oh my gosh I'm so sad you know like we had such great times when me and so and so were were married and you know like I, I wasn't I wasn't doing that you know like being that person I quietly sat down I sat down with Matt you know I whispered in that Matt you know like would you like to go up to the casket you know like do you want to go say hi to some of your relatives like you tell me what you want to do you know and and I was just there for support but I mean they ended up welcoming me there with open arms and even inviting me to their family reunions which I never went because I think that's weird um so it, I, I think it really just depends. Um, and it, it depends on their spouse. Like if my ex-husband died and I knew that his new wife like did not want to see my face, did not want me there, I would respect her wishes. And I would probably just send flowers instead, you know, with my family's name on. Like I'm, I'm a, I want to respect other people's wishes. You know, I don't want to just insert myself into different places. So, you know, that's, that's a thing. Like, I just feel it's totally disrespectful if you know damn well that their spouse or their family, if they didn't have a spouse, you know, or their kids or whatever is like, no, you are not to be here. I would not go. I would just simply pay my respect in a, in a different way. I would, I would definitely respect their wishes. I was met with this scenario when my mom died and it wasn't even one of my exes it was one of Jeff's but I made it abundantly clear I made it but because nobody wanted wanted to do anything nobody wanted to make any any decisions everybody was so wrapped up in everything I'm like fuck it if you're putting me in charge I'm going to be in charge and like there's going to be a certain way I want this shit handled and if it's not then that's going to open up another layer of issues, and it did. But there were, like much of what you were saying, there were certain people that I knew were going to try to infiltrate the service or the ceremony or what have you and try to make it all about them. And that's exactly what unfolded. And I made it abundantly clear before, way before the day of, Told Jeff, told any, told my dad, told everybody. I do not want this individual anywhere around the vicinity of what is happening here. Yeah. I do not want this individual here. And not only did that individual show up, knowing I had said that, knowing that was my feelings on it made a complete and total fucking spectacle of themselves upon entry. The crying, the weeping, the... And this was like a significant X in Jeff's life, but X nonetheless. Yeah. Especially when I said, 
don't want the bitch here. Right. Keep her the fuck out of here. And then they're going to show up and they're going to make, like, I had to stop what I was doing because I couldn't concentrate because my left ear hole was being penetrated by a layer of fuckery that should not have ever been a thing. But it was. Yeah. And I have a huge fucking problem with that. I think about when that day comes and like my ex mother in law, you know, passes away. What is the protocol? You know, she did a lot for me. Like I've known her a long time. She's my kid's grandmother. Right. Um, you know, when that day comes, I kind of feel like out of respect. I should go pay my respects. However, if it's made abundantly clear that my presence is not welcome there, much like what you're saying, okay, that's your wishes. And I, who am I to call? That's what you want. That's th this is your thing. Yeah. If, if, if you don't mind, then I would like to come pay my respects. If you don't want me there, you, that's the end of the conversation. Yeah. I understand. Like what you're saying, I'll send flowers or I'll just, or, or, or I'll just turn around and I'll go fuck myself. I don't, well, you know, whatever it needs to happen here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, and I mean, I know sometimes too, like people get super mad or, you know, if something's fresh and stuff, you know, I, I do think that sometimes like they will say, no, I don't want you there, you know, but. They really did. You know what I mean? Like, I know that that happens sometimes. And then if you if you don't go and they really wanted you there, it, it's kind of like an extra axe, you know, like, well, I know I said that I didn't want you there, but you didn't even show up. You don't even care. Kind of. Yeah. Thing. And it's kind of like, mm, OK, you know, like, so that's why I, I, I like the sending flowers thing, because. They can't deny a delivery. And at least they know that you were thinking of them and they know what you did. So they can't come back and be like, you don't even care. It's like, well, then why did I send flowers or a plant or a cookie bouquet or whatever, you know, for whatever thing? Um, it's, you know, it's it's those sort of things, you know, and that can, that can definitely get a little tricky. But, yeah, I mean, or if, like, my... My ex's new wife died, you know, I, I would feel, I would feel fucking terrible, absolutely terrible. And I would probably go pay my respects to him for his loss, you know, not because I knew her or that I liked her or whatever. I don't know anything about her, you know, really. Um, I know her name and I know what she looks like. <laughs> But that's it. I, I don't know her, but I would go for him only if if it was okay just to pay my respects to him for his loss because I, I would feel terrible about that, you right. know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a line for that. And, you know, that, that it's, it's tricky to navigate that. Um, it's just, you know, I don't know. I just don't want them fake ass fucking people coming to my funeral and being like, oh my God. Rip. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like she was, she was such a good person. You know, like we shared a Slurpee one day or, you know, she, she ran into my arm and I dropped my things and she told me that she was sorry. It's just, it's just fucking weird. Oh. I'm glad you brought this up because this is one of those things that happens a lot, but it's never talked about. Right. Because how, how, how do you approach it diplomatically without it conjuring up a bunch of internal personal feelings? Right. However, it's something that every most, most families deal with and some level or another, you know, and even the celebrity aspect of it, you see it all, especially, you know, we were a part of the professional wrestling business for a long time. Yeah. And 
professional wrestling fans are among the most passionate fan bases of any sport and or entertainment entity. Very passionate. Right. So, like, superstar Billy Graham just recently passed away. And you've got people that are younger than us, you know, putting up the this testimonial about how wonderful he is. However, they couldn't tell me anything about him. Right. He couldn't tell me what era he wrestled in. He could. They couldn't tell me who his most famous rivals were. They're they're latching on because for people that are in our age demo, even though when we became fans, he was nearing the end of his career. He wasn't so far removed that we didn't know who he was or what his contributions were. Right. Um. So it's. I'm glad you put spotlight on this because this is an aspect of real life that (laughs) there is a level of decency when you are embarking on something like this. Yes. And like you, you've inspired me, Amy, in terms of, in addition to getting my affairs in order, in addition to having my, my will in place. Oh, hold on. I I don't know. Hold on. Holy shit, what is happening? I don't know. She just went bolting out of her studio as if, I don't know, pizza showed up or something. (laughs) In other news. uh, Well, since we're doing this, we'll go ahead and throw a a, a cheap, uh, cheap plug in there real quick. For all of the latest merchandise for the real podcast and all of our shows here on the PFC Network, Head on over to CafePress.com forward slash PFC Network, the official online store of the Pure Fury Creations Entertainment Network. I feel like uh, within a week's time, there's going to be a brand new shirt over on the Real Podcast store that's going to say, oh my God, rip. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. I heard someone knocking at my door. I was like, "Are you?" St-? I thought someone was trying to come in to my house. I was like, what the fuck? I knew something was happening the way you jumped up and bolted. I was like, oh, either pizza's here or... No, I didn't even... That's the thing. I didn't even order pizza. Like, I just heard a knock. And then I thought I I thought I thought heard, like, jiggling at the door. It was Pepper and her tail. And she jumped up and was, like, messing with the doorknob. Pepper. I know. Like, I swear, I thought someone was, like, breaking in my house. It freaked me out. Because it's just me and Chase here. So. Well, thankfully, that's that's not the case. Yeah, no, no. Just Pepper. Just the dog. Thanks, Pepper. I know. Anyway. So, hey, yeah, good, I'm... Good topic huh? this week. You So you liked it? I mean, I ain't mad about it. I chuckled. <laughs> I, think, um, I think the next topic that we have... Um, the next time that we, we do is, is going to kind of, kind of hitch on to this one with, with a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a spin. Um, is it okay to not have a hero and kind of, kind of go into that? Because believe it or not, I don't have one. That does not surprise me with you. Yeah, I, I, I just don't have one. Like, is it, is it weird? Is it unnatural for people not to have a hero? It's, you know, so, so we'll, we'll dive into that on the next time. I am looking forward to that conversation. I mean, not that I don't any other one, but that's going to be a good one. That's going to be very thought provoking. And thank you for giving me something of a heads up. So I've got two weeks to prepare. Yeah. And, um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, this is this is that's a good one, Amy. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, as we put a bow on this one, is there anything else you'd like to add to it? No, thank you. Except for right. we're safe. No one's breaking in. So no one's breaking in. Uh, hey, check out Juju Sweets over on Facebook.com. Uh, see all the cool shit that Amy's got going on outside of the podcast studio. Uh, very, very cool very cool things she's got going on over there so take a little bit of time and explore what she's doing 
you will be most impressed, I guarantee it. Um, and again, one more time, check out the online store at cafepress.com forward slash PFC Network. And mark your calendar, Saturday, June the 10th, starting at 1 p.m. It is Pride in the Park in Holly, Michigan at Lakeside Park. The PFC All-Stars are going to be live and in person. Come by, say hello. We'll we'll take pictures. We'll sign autographs. You know, what, whatever needs, needs to happen here, we are very proud to be a part of this thing. So with that, go out this week. Be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you right back here in two weeks with the next edition of The Real Podcast here on the PFC Entertainment Network.